And then we get to the main event that everybody wanted to talk about. Now I'll talk about this, and I may have to go relieve myself because it's going to give me gas again. Their big pay-per-view main event on this pay-per-view card, a cage match. Old Twinkle Toes himself, Kenny Olivier against Plummer Moxley. And they promoted this one and beat it to death. And for the, again, for the AEW fan, for the kind of people who like that kind of thing, that's the kind of thing those people like. And I will say this briefly. I'm not going to try to talk about really any story they told or what they did in this fucking match. As far as having a match, I'm going to give you the high points of the ridiculousness of it. But let me make this clear. I can understand, and I've said this on the program, and when we talked about the match he had in Japan recently, I can understand a bit of the appeal of Kenny. Overlook his past actions with children and sex toys. Don't care that he's a mush-mouthed douchebag nerd. If you can get past his funny faces, gesticulating and prancing, if you can pay no heed to the rotten booking that he's always involved in, if you can let it matter not, then you never really know if he's a baby face or a heel because he does the same shit regardless. And if you can be unfazed by his boring personality and lack of ever really being believably angry or violent, he's athletic and his presentation in Japan, where they like the guy jeans anyway, makes him look a lot better than he is, and I can understand that appeal. And if you like video game wrestling matches, I can see where you could tolerate this fucking guy. But explain to me Moxley. He looks like an outlaw mud show piece of shit. He acts like an outlaw mud show piece of shit. And just like his hero and boyfriend, the bank-addicted drug robber, all he's ever going to be is an outlaw mud show piece of shit. And is this some type of, I don't know, mass hysteria? Like when, when Vince managed to convince people for a couple of years that the Ultimate Warrior was worth a shit? That everybody's just blind at some kind of hysteria? I told you what it was. It's a true cult of personality. CM Punk comes out to the song, but it's a real thing. It's a concept beyond the song. That's what we have with Moxley and the AEW fans. Why would anybody want to be around this guy's personality? That I couldn't tell you, but that's what it is. I mean, you know, the fucking, the fucking former football players they do on Family Guy with, well, you know, coming up over the far turn there, you know, like that. He's a fucking mental case. He's He's got chronic concussion, whatever. So anyway, they start this match. The first action that you see, because Moxley leaves the cage and jumps Kenny on the floor, and the first action you see is Kenny throwing the fakest, weakest, girliest punches at Moxley, not even connecting. Just They're just swinging their arms and hands. They're not throwing anything at anybody. It's just meaningless motion. Can I jump in here? Please. Because I don't have a, as big a problem with Omega as you do, and you know where I stand on Moxley, but you're being almost too nice about not just Omega, but both of their punches, but Omega's were towards the camera, so you got to see what they were. I mean, yeah, it, they were just whiffs. I mean, it wasn't even like, I'm going to try to make this look good. I'm just going to swing... It looked, it looked really fake to me. That's what they're doing. That's what, because they're too busy trying to concentrate on Moxley wants to bleed and be violent and Doofus wants to be a video game character. So they can't be bothered to do shit that actually looks good, which is my problem with both of them. The fucking guy can dive off the roof and do triple flips, can't throw a fucking punch. So I made notes. Sloppy brawling. Claudio and Useless come out. And they jump fucking who's he, what's he? And then here comes the Hardly Boys with super kicks. They throw Useless off the stage. And then Claudio throws Matty off the stage. And then Nikki dives off the stage. The match has been forgotten. We don't even see where the cage is or where the people are. And I wrote Morbid Curiosity. I can't skip this. I've got to see how bad it is. 
So security broke up the fights outside. They get in the cage and they do a fake one-two that nobody sells. Then they stand there and trade chops on purpose. The one-two, the one-two got me because Moxley does that in every one of his matches. Here these guys are, apparently they hate each other. Both of yeah. their cliques are fighting at ringside. The stupidest part with the stage, with the dive off the stage, whatever. They get in there after all this. Now let's trade back and forth. But it's not just let's trade. I'm going to hit you. Now I'm going to stand here, take a breath, and stick my chest out. If you watch yeah. it and actually time it, it was ridiculous. It was just, I'm going to feed you. Why? What is the point of that? Is it, I'm a badass so you can hit me? Like, what is the point in doing that he does it in every match? He did it here after jump-starting it. And then Kenny threw some more fake punches that Moxley doesn't sell. He doesn't even register when somebody punches him. He just throws it back. It's so phony. And then Kenny did some flips. And then he pulled a barbed wire wrapped chair from between the ring and the cage and pulled it in. And now they're using a... Kenny hits the plumber in the back with the barbed wire chair, then stomps on it. And so now dipshit, not only is the plumber, his back is bleeding and his head is bleeding. And I wrote, why not put Ian Rotten on national television and give all the fans free hepatitis? This is the, for the lowest common denominator. This is garbage television for stupid people. And it's, it's so embarrassing I think it's that they... They call this pro wrestling, and the only alternative to this is Vince's fairyland. So you either got to look at wrestling for five-year-olds or garbage wrestling for convicted felons. There's no in-between. And again, I said it at the top, the commentating on this match, the commentating on this match was so atrocious. Until they acknowledge and recognize how counterproductive Excalibur and Shivani are together... This show is just so hard to not put mute on. They're horrible. I, again, I don't know if this is actual, real, legitimate four-prong barbed wire. I don't know if they're getting two-prong. I don't know if they're clipping some of them. They were definitely cutting their back up. Moxley cut his own head, big news. He does that on live television constantly. But it wasn't like... Anybody that's ever worked with any kind of barbed wire, if they'd have done with real barbed wire, unaltered barbed wire in some fashion, what they did here, they would their skin would have been hanging in shreds. But they were still cutting themselves up, so they're taking some step to mitigate it. But it's still stupid, and this still looks believable as barbed wire, which makes both of them complete idiots. And why would you want to see this? And it, because... They're not doing a good enough job of making you convinced they're really fighting. They're obviously cooperating, but they're still getting hurt. And that's the stupidest thing I can think of. So it's dope. Anyway, they unscrewed the top turnbuckle. The top rope was down and Moxley had the hook in Kenny's mouth. And I, again, with Mr. Badass Plumber Moxley, I would love to see Moxley just go up nose to chest and have that badass look in a real situation in a bar somewhere with Steve Williams. And, and just in, in their, if we had a time machine and they could in their respective primes when we still had Doc with us. And I think, in my opinion, that Plumber Moxley, if he was on the wrong side of Steve Dr. Death Williams in a real situation, would do one of two things. He'd either be hospitalized in 25 seconds or Dr. Death would have made an appetizer out of him and eaten him in about 15. So anyway, then they've got tied up in the rope and then Moxley goes and pulls out a bag and it's broken glass. And that's why I wrote, can someone send him to mental rehab now that we got the alcohol rehab out of the way so they can see what this fucking major malfunction is in his brain pan. And then he took a bump in his own glass. And as he took the bump in the glass, he sells it for like five seconds and then grabs a sleeper on Kenny. And at that, that's the point I said, this is too ridiculous. There's eight minutes left on the air. I'm fast forwarding. So I fast forwarded to the point where Kenny hits him with his little 
Canterbury knee, and this time they'd gimmick the cage. They went through the cage to the floor, and that looked pretty good because Kenny almost broke his fucking leg when he got hung across the thing, so it looked like it really hurt people because it probably did. When you say got hung across the thing, Kenny hits the knee on Moxley, but when Moxley goes through the cage, Kenny goes with him, but his leg is in between the cage and the ring stuck yeah. there. I mean, he's lucky he didn't tear everything right there. Yeah, and, and he crotched himself on the metal cross beam of the cage while he stuck his right leg in between the cage and the ring, so he could have broken the leg. Thank God when he fucking landed crotch first on that railing, there's nothing in that part of his body to fucking injure. So then <laughs> Moxley gets a screwdriver and he's going to stab Kenny in the face. But that's where Don Fallis comes in. And he grabs the screwdriver away from Moxley and then, you know, bails out to the corner or something where... In a cartoony way. In a, a very cartoony way to call attention to... It wasn't like, I'm a really, I'm a pussy begging for my life. It's like, I'm showing you that I'm acting. And then Kenny... Now that Moxley's been relieved of the screwdriver, Kenny grabs the plumber and hits the one-winged fairy on him and covers him, and Phallus comes back from behind and stabs. And I'm talking a big stabbing motion. He's got a fucking screwdriver, whether it's a flathead or a Phillips. If you stabbed someone in the top of the head as hard as he worked that he did... Point is, Kenny sells his head, but he wasn't bleeding right away. And Moxley crawled over and covered him one, two, three. And then they keep the camera off Kenny forever while everybody's going, Why would Don do this? Why would he do such a thing? And it's a close up of Don. And finally, about two minutes later, when they felt like he'd accomplished it, Don goes back over and stands over him, and Kenny looks up. And he's got a pap smear. Possibly a busted pimple. This fucking pussy. In the main event of this big cage match and this hardcore wrestling promotion is supposed to get juice by being stabbed in the head with a screwdriver. And he's so scared of doing it. He gets a pap smear for a fucking screwdriver stabbing. Why do it? Couldn't be a situation like Luger in 88 in Baltimore where you're supposed to get it, but for whatever reason, it doesn't happen? You know what the reason was? What was the reason? He'd almost never done it. He was scared to fuck of doing it. So it was just like that. <laughs> that's what happened. And that's what happened. So then Don goes to stab him again while all the male referees are standing around. This is not Brock Lesnar. This is not Andre the Giant. This is Don Fallis, the manager, and he's going to stab the guy in the head with a screwdriver, and the male referees are all standing around the same size as him. No, please don't do that. But then Don decides not to, throws the screwdriver down, grabs Kenny, and kisses him on the face and says something to him and leaves the ring. Did you hear Excalibur? I mean, it was so bad. I almost wish I had the exact words in front of me was he's practically family he's literally family well i mean he's basically a son that uh, he couldn't figure <laughs> out what to say to describe this stupid relationship so he just said uh, every single f family relationship someone could have he associated to these two guys well this was one of the worst televised matches that i've ever seen from any wrestling promotion ever and i guarantee you that the fucking aew fans couldn't have loved anything more if you'd have wrapped it up in a fucking bow and given it to them with a brand new car you're right about that and that's the AEW fans loved it and that end is where the problem is because you're not going to get anybody but the small amount of people that like this kind of fucking hokey ass bullshit to watch this hokey ass bullshit. But if they don't ever try to do something more professional and something that doesn't make wrestling all look like the goddamn guy that bites the fucking heads off the live chickens at the county fair, then this is all they're ever going to fucking do. Can Punk even save this? You know, again, not taking away what you think about Omega, I didn't have a problem with Omega here, and I thought Omega, to his credit, has been taking things a little more seriously in terms of how they've been doing it. 
you notice they didn't do the whole North Carolina introduction for him. It well, was yeah, just, but he still he was he was throwing fake punches and his work looks right. like shit. But at least they didn't you know comedy it up even worse. I don't expect his punches to suddenly get good. So I mean that doesn't surprise me. But at least his promos haven't been as silly, and they gave him a regular introduction. He's had a cartoon manager who's only there because of who his friends are. There's been a tease for a while about this breakup, the stuff with Don Callis and Takeshita, Don Callis getting cut, Blackpool Combat Club saying you have to bleed with us to join us. So this has been teased for a while. But again, this isn't like Bobby Heenan or Jimmy Hart or Jim Cornette or Gary Hart or some big, long-established heel manager that was all of a sudden with the baby face because the heel turned baby face and then he turned on him. To me, this isn't that at all. They've tried to make Phallus and Omega a thing. Omega's a thing. Callus is just there with him because, again, who his friends are. But the Moxley matches are terrible. Now you got Don Callis in the middle of this. Do you think they're going to propel this to Wembley, or are they going to tie this all together sooner? I, I couldn't possibly give a shit. I just, I... You know, again, Kenny... For the kind of people who like that kind of thing, that's the kind of thing those people like. I can't see what anybody sees in this fucking Moxley from the visual to the work to the to the attitude that he has toward the business to the fact that he acts like this and refuses to use his status to teach younger guys the good and bad habits. Instead, he teaches them all the bad and none of the good. He's a bad influence on anybody that wants to be a wrestler because they might think that they should do some of this bullshit too. That's the thing about Moxley for the people. Cause we hear from people every now and then they're like, you got to watch his stuff. He's hard hitting. He's this and that. His you stuff looks bad. Everything he does in the ring that he thinks makes himself look like a badass looks horrible. His punches look like shit. The elbows look like shit. The forearms look like shit. Everything he does looks bad. So if you're ignoring all that, to say his matches are good. And plus, it's constant bad wrestling and bad taste in wrestling. And he, he encourages the whole garbage deathmatch bullshit. He encourages younger guys to fucking do this outlaw indie shit that's going to limit their career and limit their potential and limit their choices. I'm not just talking about getting hurt and limiting your career. I'm talking about the WWE sees people and if they see you doing that shit, they're going to fucking roll their eyes and move on with the barbed wire and the broken glass and the bullshit. They may take it from some guy that's established somehow, and they can say, well, he just doesn't have to do that. We can still use him, but they're not going to take rookies into their training program when they're most noted for rolling around in broken glass. And one more thing on Omega here. And again, I know you disagree with a lot of the stuff on Omega, but it hits me watching this. I mean, Kenny Omega is a guy that, from the beginning of AEW, has been presented by AEW as a main eventer. Not always booked like one, but they present him like one. To me, he's so much more valuable as a singles wrestler than in trios matches or anything else. Like, we don't get to just see singles matches. That's really, if you're, if you're a Kenny Omega fan, isn't that what you want? Well, one would think, but... If, if... I was figuring Kenny's been injured so many times. They just want to, and the, the buckaroos, they just want to have belts and play with their friends. So that when they were trying to hide Kenny's injuries in the six mans, but he seemed to be moving around just fine. When Moxley had a goddamn turnbuckle hook in his fucking jaw. That was the same hook that ripped apart the arm, a cash wheeler on TV. Well, no, I'm pretty sure they've changed the hook. Well, you know what I mean? It did nothing <laughs> yeah. to Omega. It was in his mouth yeah. against his cheek. Well, what's he supposed to do? Blade his fucking cheek open? You don't like do the spot. Glasgow smile? You don't do the spot. That's that's what you do. Well, exactly. Don't do the spot. Well, that was AEW anyway. Dynamite. <laughs>